Hey, what's up, y'all? Quentin here with Catfish Karma, and in today's episode of One Spot, One Fish, the spot is about eight feet wide by a thousand feet long because I'm doing some drifting with my brand new bumping rod. I think it's going to be a good episode. Let's do this. Sooner did I get the last words of the intro out, and this one bit. My brand new back bouncing rod that I just built. Now I'll be honest, this isn't the first fish. I've been drifting about 15 minutes and I've already got one uh, that was about 27, 26 to 27 pounds. I don't think this one's that big, but that's okay. It's a good way to start the video. Now on one spot, one fish, I always guarantee at least one fish on film, but we're always shooting for more. Oh, well, that one has been eating well. Big old belly on it. There we go, fish number two for the day. Probably about 12 pounds, 11 pounds, somewhere in there. All right, before we get too far, let me say this. If it looks like I'm tweaking out, constantly looking around and stuff. If it seems like I'm wound up more than usual, you know, moving quicker, that sort of stuff. It's because I'm fishing in the shipping channel. And I've got to watch out for traffic. And I've got some uh, downstream traffic on the way, so. I don't want you guys to think I'm like tweaking out or anything, but I've got a lot to watch out for out here in this channel. This production is being brought to you by Battery Outfitters with locations all over the Mid-South. They are your neighborhood's battery store. The bait of choice today is gonna be Asian carp and skipjack. Nice little skipjack head there, a three ounce weight, and my brand new bumping rod. I just did an entire build series about this rod, about the process of getting it built up. So you guys may have already seen it, but I'm going to try to let you see it some more because it is gorgeous out here in the sunlight. Let's see if I can do this while bumping. I got that awesome sparkly royal blue there, both in my decal and my trim bands. It ties in with the guides, the reel seat. That's the only flash to the rod. I, I'm not crazy about wild colors. I focus more in on the performance of the rod. I've built uh, multiple bumping rods on this exact blank and I've been playing with the power and action depending on where I trim the blank down. I've got one just a little bit lighter than this that I actually really enjoyed. But it's it could be argued that it might be just a tiny, tiny bit too soft for the really deep swift water where you gotta use a bigger sinker. And then there again, you know, depending on the size, the size of the fish, I mean, it, it loads up pretty deep uh, in the blank. So this one I went just a, just a little bit stronger. Cut everything a little bit farther back in the blank. And then also I added another guide, uh, not only for the, to improve the load sharing, but it also stiffens up the action just a little bit. First bite. Oh, yes. Well, he wanted it. He wanted it. Woo-wee! That feels so good. Feels so good. He would have to be trying to go to the opposite side of the boat. I'd like to land it over here where the camera's pointing. It's been a long time since I filmed an episode of uh, One Spot One Fish, and it's been an even longer time since I filmed any action uh, bumping or drifting or back bouncing, whatever you guys like to call it. 
I'm trying to get it to this side of the boat. Woo! Shoot! <laughs> That feels so good. I think I'm going to need the net on this one. Keeps wanting to go under the boat. Woo -hoo -hoo. I love this blank. That was a big tail, y'all. It's not a monster, but it's no sunfish. Oh, there we go. I'll take it. I can't tell you how good it feels. I just built this rod. I mean, the finish on it is barely dry. It's been dry like four days. And I'm landing good fish on it. That's awesome. There we go. Yes. That one's in the 30s. Get it unhooked. To give you a good look at it. Oh boy. It's a biter. Oh boy. Oh, he's biting. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Check it out, y'all. I'm not going to bother to weigh it, but it's in the 30s. Probably 35. Somewhere in there. 33. Whoo! It was a... It was a fun one. Alright, look. I know the title of this episode is One Spot, One Fish, but I can't help myself. We're going to pretend... But it's one spot, four fish, or three fish. I don't know. One more than what I've got right now. How about that? You never know. <clears throat> the whole point of this series was really just to, uh, just to, you know, bring you guys quick fishing videos that you could maybe watch on your lunch break or, you know. You got a few minutes to spare while your while your significant other is getting ready to go to dinner, whatever the case may be. You know, just not a long drawn out video, but where there's some guaranteed action of at least one fish. That's sort of the point. But today's action came so quick, I figure, you know, why not swing for the fences and get a few fish, maybe a giant. You never know. So I brought three bumping rods with me today. Obviously this one, which I just finished. Another one somewhat similar to it, but without the without the flash. And it doesn't have as nice a real seat. Uh, but same blank though, same grips. Um, that one's a tick shorter than this one by about, I think, two inches. And then also I've got a, yeah, I've got a Gen 3 Warrior Cat bumping rod, which in my opinion is the most sensitive production rod that has ever been made. I don't think there's another one even close to it, honestly. But it's a broomstick, and I absolutely hate fighting fish on it. Uh, a lot of the sensitivity from that rod does come from the fact that it's so stiff. Not that it doesn't have good guides and a good real steep, because it does, but man is it stiff. And that kind of helped me to set my goals for this build. Uh, well, all the builds that I've built on this blank, actually, is I was looking for something that would match or surpass the sensitivity of that rod, but still load up well, uh, even on smaller fish. Whereas the Warrior Cat, I mean, it doesn't load up at all on a 10-pounder. 
Um, it's so stiff that when a smaller fish is tumbling, you're, you're far more likely to lose them. And it's just not remotely as fun to fight a fish on, on that rod, unless it's, you know, a truly big fish, something, something 40 class and above. But this one, as you saw it, man, it, it loads up great. Um, the other one that I've got over here is a little bit softer than this because I, as I mentioned earlier, I cut it a little bit farther forward on the blade. And uh, it certainly stays loaded. This might be the perfect balance though. If you guys haven't seen the build series yet where I built this rod, check it out, man. If you're, if you're even a little bit interested in building your own rods. Um, it's a three video series. And I give some tips in there for true beginners, people who know virtually nothing about building a rod, people that probably are, have built none or just barely getting their feet wet in it. That's a little bitty old bait on this one, but it doesn't feel like a little bitty old fish. This one's angry. <laughs> this production is being brought to you by Battery Outfitters with locations all over the Mid-South. They are your neighborhood battery store. just working that bumping rod and quite honestly uh, I wasn't even sure if my side rod still had bait it was just a little bitty old bait boy this sucker right here just left the, the buffet I think this dude is thick Fifty pounds once you subtract the net. Hey, <laughs> oh. this is not the best smelling catfish I've caught lately. We got him a funk going on. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of One Spot One Fish. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, just subscribe and hit the notification bell because I've got several new videos on the way. Thanks for watching.